In this video, we'll cover slope-intercept form. Specifically, we'll answer the questions, what is a y-intercept, what is slope-intercept form, and how do I find slope and y-intercepts from graphs and tables? Let's start with what is a y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is the value of y where a graph line crosses the y-axis. You can also think of it as the value of y when x is equal to zero. So if you look at these three graphs, I will highlight the y-axis because we are looking for the point where the graph crosses or touches the y-axis. So on the first graph, you would say the y-intercept is two. On this graph, the y-intercept is 24. And for the last graph, the y-intercept is negative 50. Slope-intercept form is this equation that says y equals mx plus b. It's important to know that slope-intercept form can be used to describe any relationship that is linear. So anything that when graphed would be a line is a linear relationship and can be represented by y equals mx plus b. Couple of things to point out here. The coefficient, or the value being multiplied by x, is m, which is your slope. It's equal to the rate of change or the slope of the line, and it is always next to x as the coefficient. Then b is what we just talked about. It is the y-intercept, or the value of y when x equals zero. So if you look at equations that are written in slope-intercept form, or y equals mx plus b, you can tell just by looking at the equation what the slope is and what the y-intercept is. So for example, on number one, because negative four is the coefficient to x, or being multiplied by x where the spot for m goes, we know that the graphed line of that equation would have a slope of negative four, and we also know that it would have a y-intercept of eight, so it would cross the y-axis at eight. In our second equation, just by looking, we see that the coefficient next to x is one-third, so the slope is one-third, and then here at the end, the y-intercept would be negative nine. It would cross the y-axis at negative nine. In the last equation, y equals negative 3 and 75 hundredths x. Well, negative 3.75 is our slope. And then because there's nothing here being added or subtracted, we know that our y-intercept is 0. So it would cross the y-axis at 0, or in other words, the origin. So let's practice finding the slope and y-intercept from graphs. And at any point during this video, I would encourage you to pause the video and try the examples before you see them worked out for you. So let's start with the slope. I'll choose two points on the line. And I know that slope of a line is the ratio of the rise over the run. So here's my rise of two. My run is three. And I see that from left to right, the line is decreasing. So it's a negative slope. And the slope would be two over three, negative two thirds. And then for my y-intercept, I'm just looking for the point where it crosses the y-axis, which is right there at negative three. Let's practice another graph. So right, find the rate of change and y-intercept of the linear relationship graphed at the right. So for the rate of change, which again will always just be equal to the slope, I'll compare the rise over the run. Look carefully at your intervals because on the y-axis this time we're counting by twos. So for my rise, this is two. And then for my run, one, two, three, four. When I set up this ratio for the rate of change, two over four or one over two, because we have units here, dollars per topping, I'm going to change this from a fraction to a decimal because it makes more sense in the context of the situation. So we would say the rate of change is 50 cents per topping. Okay, and then the y-intercept is here where it touches the y-axis or when x is equal to zero. Y is right there at $10. Now let's find slope and y-intercept from a linear relationship shown in a table. So starting with slope, I need to use my slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I can choose any two ordered pairs from the table. I'll just go with the first two. So I'm going to write them out as negative 3, 19 and negative 2, 14. I'm going to label these x1, y1, and x2, y2. So 
Now I'm ready to substitute these into the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 14 minus 19 is negative 5. Negative 2 minus negative 3 is 1. So this simplifies to negative 5. The slope is negative 5. Now remember for y-intercepts, since we don't have a graph to look at, what we're looking for is the value of y whenever x equals 0. So you can see in the table x is 0 and y is equal to 4. So we know our y-intercept is 4. Let's try another table to find the rate of change and the y-intercept. So rate of change, again, is equal to our slope. So I'm going to write out my slope formula. And I can choose any two ordered pairs from the table. I'm going to choose the values that don't have decimals. So I will use 2, 2, I'm going to write them up here, and 6, 5. So for y2 minus y1, I will subtract the y values in the ordered pairs, 5 minus 2, and then x minus x, 6 minus 2. So simplify by subtracting, and I get 3 over 4. Or we could write that as a decimal, 75 hundredths. And it's a rate of change. We're given units here. So look at your categories for your x and your y. So that's going to be pounds per book, 0.75 pounds per book. And then my y-intercept, again, is the value of y whenever x equals 0. So looking for where x is 0, the y-intercept is 5 tenths. All right. Well, we've answered the questions. What is a y-intercept? What is slope-intercept form? And how do I find slope and y-intercepts from graphs and tables? Great job, and thanks for listening. I sure hope that helped. Check out the links below and be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time.